Looks peaceful, doesn't it? A beautiful summer stream. Hard to believe this little stream could become a 30-foot wall of raging water inside of 15 minutes. But it happened on August 18th, 1955, and 40 people died right around us. Some of them got hung up in these very trees, and that's where they were found the next day. The 1955 flood caused major devastation and took scores of lives throughout the Delaware watershed. But the biggest single loss of life occurred near the town of Amalomink, on Broadhead Creek, upstream of Stroudsburg. Hurricane Connie had passed through this area just days before, saturating the soils and bringing the streams up to bank full. Then Hurricane Diane moved over the same area and dropped heavy rains on the already soaking terrain. Across broad parts of the upper watershed, there were four inch rains with areas of six inch, eight inch, and even 10 inch rains on the steep slopes of the Pocono Mountains. The results would prove catastrophic for people and property. Linda Lecropane was 13 in August of 1955. She had spent 10 summers with family and friends at a small summer retreat by the creek known as the Davis Cabins. Linda was the last person to leave the cabins that evening before the surge of water came. She had walked through the heavy rain to an evening church service just a few hundred yards away. I can only conjecture what happened, but we do have first-hand reports uh, from uh, some of the six survivors of the flood. I know that um, they all, uh, as the water came up, uh, into their cabins, they all gathered uh, in one of two houses on the property. And um, from what we were told, um, over 30 people, mostly women and children, um, two men, and um, uh, my great uncle was one of them, um, they, they all met at the big house. And then as the water started, rising further, they decided to go up in the attic, uh, which had to be an incredibly cramped space and very dark. And uh, they got everybody up in the attic. I think they brought a few blankets. I think they had a couple of candles. From one of the survivors, we were told that it was very peaceful. There was no screaming or crying. Um, uh, We were a people of faith, and um, praying came as easily as talking. And so um, we were told that they prayed and they sang throughout the time that they were there. In the morning, rescuers surveyed the grim scene. These photos show how the creek turned raging river shot through the land where the cabins had been. The buildings and all signs of life around them were gone. Only the remains of a foundation could be seen where dozens of people had taken refuge. Downstream in Stroudsburg, the surging water destroyed bridges, buildings, and lives. Everyone likes to live along the water. It's a beautiful place, it's peaceful, but there's a price to be paid for that peace, and that's vigilance. It's something that people in 1955 didn't know to have and didn't really have the technology to carry out. But we do, we have that now. We have NOAA weather radio, which is both portable and at a base station. You can use your cell phone to get alerts. You can have people call you at your home. You can get RSS feeds on your computer. You can look at the gauging stations along any major streams in your area. The Hydrologic Prediction Service offers a lot of tools for us, and they're all free. But it's up to us to use those tools to protect ourselves and our families and our property.